Welcome to another Airbrush Asylum video. In this video, I wanna talk about something that you've probably encountered if you've been airbrushing for a little while. It doesn't take long to happen and that is tip drying. Okay, so what is tip drying and why does it occur? Well, let's just uh, remove this head assembly from the Iwata Eclipse. So this has a slightly different setup to a lot of the other brushes that you may see. So on the Eclipse, I'll just use the back of the needle as a pointer. It's got the brass nozzle as well as the little small spray nozzle. So this is what most airbrushes have on their own and that just screws into the uh, head assembly usually. A uh, little bit of a different configuration on this brush, but it's all the same and it still creates uh, tip drying in the same way. So what happens is air and paint are flowing through this tiny little nozzle, okay? And what happens is the air dries up the paint and therefore that starts to dry up in the nozzle and on the needle, creating tip drying. And then once the tip drying builds up too much, so if I reinsert the needle, just push it through carefully. Okay, you can see the needle's now exposed. All right, so it builds up around the front of that needle there. And then what happens is that stops the paint from flowing through and therefore you get interrupted spray, which you don't want, obviously. So let's go ahead, spray a little bit and I'll show you what happens and what I do to rectify it. Okay, so let's go ahead and start this test. We'll build up some tip drying. I'm just going to use some Trident water-based airbrush color, put that into my Eclipse, and this is not thinned, all right? So I want to just run it straight. That's going to create tip drying a lot faster. So one of the ways that you can solve tip drying is by thinning out your paint more. I do have a video on that, which you can see up in the card here somewhere. So go check that out. That'll show you all the tips and tricks on uh, what reduction and PSI ratios I like to use. All right, so let's go ahead now. And keeping your air on, I'm just going to start to really build up some tip drying. So just start airbrushing basically. And what will happen is, like I mentioned before, the paint will start to dry up as that air flows through. Now another thing that really helps with building up tip drying, and it's uh, difficult for me to do because I've been airbrushing for so long and I've really got that double action technique, press, like press down, pull back for paint, I've got that sorted. But when you first start, so I'm deliberately painting badly here to show you, um, by not shutting the paint back off, so by not returning that trigger, so when I press down, pull back for paint, I return it back to the start position. If you go and pull back for paint and then let go, what happens is, see, when you press down for air, more paint just comes straight out, okay? That's because you haven't shut the paint off. So there's residual paint stuck in there. So the next time that you press down for air, it spits out on you, all right? And that can really ruin your artwork. But what that also does, and this is why a lot of my beginners have issues with tip drying more so than I would, is because they're not used to using the airbrush correctly and that residual paint is sitting at the end of that nozzle, building up, building up, building up, and then it just gets more and more blocked and the issues start, all right? So I'm gonna to continue to paint really badly. So do not, follow this method of painting. This is not how you airbrush, but this will help to build up tip drying so that I can show you what I do to clear it off. You can see it's already spitting out. All right, so, okay, so now have a look at the end of that needle. Now you can see, well, at least I hope you can see there, that, that blob of paint, that is tip drying, okay? So that's happened reasonably quickly because I haven't been using the correct double action. So that is the first step to controlling your tip drying is learning how to airbrush properly, all right? So keep the air pressed down at all times and then just pull back for paint, all right? So you don't wanna pull back and then let go because then you're gonna have that issue that I explained earlier. The other thing that you can do to minimize tip drying is to add reducer to your paint. So like I said, there's that video that you can watch. 
So I'll recommend to my students a one-to-one -one ratio, so equal parts of reducer and paint running at a 30 to 40 PSI uh, set up on your compressor. If you want to do detailed stuff, I run at 70 percent uh, reduce a 30% paint at about 18 to 20 psi for my finer detailing and the brushes with the 0 0.8, 0 0.18 mil needle nozzle setups. All right, but again, go check out that video. That'll give you a lot more information on uh, exactly what to do. Okay, so the other thing that you can do is with your fingernail, just pick it off. All right, so just like that, pick off the tip drying. And I also put my finger over the front, like so, press down for air and pull back. And what that does is it will just create some air bubbles through there. You're, you're forcing the air to go back and back bubble through the cup. And that will dislodge any um, dried paint that you may have building up on the needle. And then as a result within that uh, air cap. The other thing to do is just give it a blast out. So full throttle on the trigger like that couple of short blasts and that'll um, clear it off. You can also use a cotton bud or a Q-tip with some airbrush cleaner or water or whatever you want to use. Even window cleaner with ammonia works uh, to clean up around that needle. So you will notice that I have removed my air cap. So this helps to control my tip drying. So whenever tip drying occurs, I can easily get to that needle and pick it off very, very carefully. Obviously be careful with your finger as well that you don't prick your finger. Um, and also remember to always put it back in a holder so you do not drop your airbrush. But if you are using the air cap, that's fine, but you just need to be aware that it's a lot harder to get in there and clean that up. So you may definitely need a cotton bud or Q-tip to do that for you, or even some of those little dental brushes work really well around that area. So there are a few things that you can um, do to quickly, easily clean it as well as manage it. The other thing on the Eclipse, you can see it's got the cutaway handle here. So what that does, it allows for you to press down for air and then you basically pull back like that to dislodge any of the um, dried paint at the front of the airbrush. So that effectively just turn, like just blasts it out full throttle, okay? I'll show you on the canvas quickly. You know, so from here, if I go, just does a full blast out, all right? So I'll take that air cap off again, picking that off, my finger over the front. Now, when you do that over the front, just be careful that you don't build up too many bubbles and paint so it spurts out the top. The other thing that can um, contribute to tip drying or blockages for that matter is if that hole is not visible. So that's the breather hole on the top of the airbrush for a gravity feed airbrush. That needs to be clear so you can use an old needle to punch that through if it's blocked. Um, you'll find if it is blocked that you won't get any action, no paint will be coming out and then all of a sudden this will go flying off the airbrush and spurt paint out the top because it's trying to find a way out because that uh, that gravity flow has been interrupted. On a siphon feed brush, this um, hole is evident on the top of the jar. All right, so same thing though, it needs to be clear. So now that the tip drying has been cleared, you can see I can just go back to airbrushing. You can see I still got a bit of an intermittent pattern. That's because I'm using this paint um, without reducer. Okay, so just for the purpose of this video, I've got some reducer here. I'm going to add some uh, reducer to this. Um, because I've already got paint in there and I've added it on top, you need to bubble it. So put your finger over the front, pull back. And that'll mix the paint and blast it through a couple of times. And you'll see what I mean now that the paint's thinner, how much better it's going to flow. So I never ever spray without my paint reduced. I much prefer it to be flowing nicely. So you can see this is a lot thinner now, but I'm not getting any of that intermittent spray. So even though that's not as opaque as this straight out of the bottle, I'd prefer spraying at this consistency. I'd probably actually turn um, the pressure down a little bit.
If this is the first time watching one of our videos, then welcome. For all of our regular viewers, welcome back. If you are enjoying this video, by all means give it the thumbs up, share it out, and let's build this airbrushing community together. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing. I do two videos a week at the moment, and I do hope that you're enjoying all this content. You can see I'm not having any issues. It's spraying nicely. I can get consistent dots. If you have a look at that nozzle now, there's hardly any tip drying. There's a little bit, but not much. So I do hope that you enjoyed checking out this video, focusing on some tip drying tips and tricks. I hope you found them helpful. Go check out some of the other videos and playlists that I've got listed here. And until next time, go grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork yourself, and I'll see you again very, very soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.